Hi everyone, this is Cecil again, and on today's Yellowstone podcast, I'm going to be telling you what you can see and do on one of Yellowstone's shorter stretches of point-to-point road, but one that still has so much to offer. And that is the section of road between Mammoth Hot Springs, which is the park's headquarters, and the north entrance to Yellowstone, which is at the town of Gardner. As always these days, I suggest that you watch this podcast on YouTube rather than just listen to it. I suggest you go to YouTube, look for, search for Yellowstone Tours. Once it brings up Yellowstone Tours, you'll see our channel. Once you're at our channel, you'll see that we have literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos and podcasts and what we call uh, virtual Yellowstone Tours. In fact, we have more Yellowstone videos than literally anyone else in the world. Search for this podcast um, and watch along because I will be referring to two maps. One of them is a map that you can see at our motel site, which is ysmotel.com, ysmotel.com forward slash map. And the other one is a map that uh, you can just find at Google Maps. So I mentioned that we're going to be doing the stretch of road between Mammoth Hot Springs and Gardner. And let's take a look at it on our map at ysmotel.com forward slash map. We'll be starting at the park's headquarters and heading north. Now this is a really short stretch of road as I mentioned before, but there's at least four major elements that you'll really enjoy on this on this road. Number one, you'll pass over the halfway point between the equator and the North Pole. Number two, keep your eyes open for bighorn sheep. Number three, you may already have seen these as you're coming from Mammoth, but there's always a herd of elk to be found somewhere in the Mammoth area. And then you'll also be going past and hopefully you'll be able to pop into the only stretch of water, the only hot spring in Yellowstone where you're allowed to go and sit in. And that is a great story all on its own. So why don't we get started? We'll leave Mammoth Hot Springs and keep your eyes open for the elk. I mentioned to you before that uh, there are always elk to be found at that part of Yellowstone. Here's one of what we call our virtual Yellowstone tours that I did. Isn't that a wonderful contrast between those elk and the historical buildings that you'll see at Fort Yellowstone and those flags always make such a wonderful sight there but I really love the contrast between the elk and the buildings. Remember though these are wild animals and you do need to stay away from them. If you want to watch this or any of our other virtual Yellowstone tours just uh, go to YouTube and search for historic Fort Yellowstone or search for the route that you want to see. So we'll be leaving Mammoth Hot Springs and if you look at this map you'll see that the Park Service, because this is a Park Service map, has very kindly provided us with close-ups of some of the more important areas in the park. So this road over here is the one that leads to the north entrance. This road here goes to Tower Roosevelt and then eventually to the northeast entrance. And this road here will pass, take you past the terraces, which I hope that you've already seen. If you haven't, you must take a look at them, the upper and the lower terraces, and eventually you'll head off uh, towards Norris Geyser Basin. But we'll be going past the post office, and then we'll be dropping down, and as you can see, it says that we'll be dropping down towards uh, the north entrance and um, the town of Gardner. I'm going to switch to satellite view. It's a little bit easier for me to point out a few things to you. So this is the road that we're going to be taking, initially heading south before going north, and you'll see that we're right next to the Gardner River. And as you continue, you're going to come to the only place in all of Yellowstone where you're actually allowed to go, and I won't really say swim, but sit in the remnants of a hot spring. And this is a hot spring. Um, This area is known as the Boiling River. Here's a picture that I shot of it one fall, oh my goodness, years and years and years ago. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see 
uh, yeah, that shouldn't have come up, but you can see that there's people in the water, you can see there's people in this little area where you can, where you can stand. And this is the Gardner River, and there's a hot spring that comes down from Mammoth and makes its way into the Gardner River. So you could literally stand with one foot in boiling hot water and the other foot, depending on the time of the year, in, in freezing water. If we take another look at it, you can see the people sitting in these little swimming holes, if you like, other people just sitting there watching them. And it's so restful and it's so peaceful. It's just a wonderful place to, to hang out. And this shows you another view of people in the, uh, in the swimming holes and just sitting there hanging out and having a, a great time. What I've done is I've gone to Google Street View. And here we are coming down from Mammoth Hot Springs towards Gardner in that direction. And where you see this car coming out, that there is the turnoff to the little parking lot that they have for the Boiling River. So what you would do is you'd park in this parking lot and then take a trail that leads down the river towards, um, well, it's actually upstream, but uh, along the river towards, uh, the, towards the Boiling River. There's something else that is pretty interesting here. Do you see this area over here? I mentioned to you before that on this trip, you're going to go past the point that is halfway between the equator and the North Pole. But do you see a sign anywhere here telling you that uh, this is halfway between the equator and the North Pole? No, you don't, because very interestingly, the Park Service actually moved the sign further down the road. So if you carry on driving down the road, you're going to come to a sign and there's a little pull out there that says 45th parallel, halfway between the equator and the North Pole. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can take a look at it. So you can uh, park over here, take a picture at the sign. This is the Gardner River in the, in the background and it always makes a really cool picture. But why did the Park Service move that move, move that sign from where it originally was for decades and decades further down the road. Well, because this is right at the Boiling River and there were so many cars and people wanting to go to the Boiling River, there was too much congestion here. So the Park Service decided to move the 45th parallel and the sign to the, to the north. This is pretty interesting over here as well. This is a little parking lot and you can park in that parking lot and when I drive past I notice people swimming and fishing um, in this stretch of, of river over here. I don't know if you're actually allowed in the river but park service doesn't seem to stop people but you might like to find out beforehand uh, if you are actually allowed to, to do that. So let's get back now to the 45th parallel Something else that's really interesting about this area, you see these steep cliffs and this hillside over here. Let's take a look at the sign and it's going to tell us area closed sheep management area. What do they mean? Well, there's a lot of bighorn sheep in this area. In fact, there's a lot of bighorn sheep in Yellowstone's what's called Northern Range. And the Northern Range refers to the mountains in the northern section of Yellowstone. So it's not unusual to see bighorn sheep here, and I always stop to take a look. So if you stand with your back to the sign that says 45th parallel and look up in these hills, what I would actually do is just walk a little bit further down this, this parking lot because you've got more chance of seeing the bighorn sheep here. Why is that? Because they tend to hang out in areas that are less hospitable, in areas that are more difficult to get to so they can stay away from their, from their predators, animals that may want to attack them. So if you're trying to find bighorn sheep, number one, it is pretty difficult because they do tend to blend into their surroundings. And number two, you would generally look for them in an area where there's a lot of grass and it's flat. Uh -uh, don't do that. Look for them in an area that is pretty steep. That's more likely where you're going to see them hanging out. Let's get back uh, on the road. I neglected to mention to you that we do cross from the state of Wyoming into the state of Montana. Now, as uh, you may know, about 
almost 97% of the, of the park, 97% of Yellowstone is in the state of Wyoming, about 2% in Montana, 1% in Idaho, but funnily enough, three of Yellowstone's entrances are actually in the state of Montana. We've got the north entrance at Gardner, we've got the northeast entrance um, where Silvergate and Port City are, and if we come down to the southwest, that's where West Yellowstone is, and that's the other one of the Montana entrances. There's actually only two entrances in, um, in Wyoming. Let's carry on along the road, and once we've left the 45th parallel, or at least the sign saying the 45th parallel behind us, we'll see that the Gardner River is now on the right-hand side of the road, or on the, um, on the east side of the road, and as you get out of the canyon, as you get out of what's called Gardner Canyon, you can see the sign over there, keep your eyes open for birds, particularly bald eagles. I so often see them in this area. You'll find that there's a lot of trees next to the river, and you can see there's a pullout over here, and there's another pullout, I forgot, maybe that's it over there, that are really close to the river, and it's not unusual to see birds of prey there. Then let's take a look at something else. We can see that it says that the entrance is right over there, but there's something called the Roosevelt Arch just outside the entrance. And the Roosevelt Arch um, was the idea of a guy called Hiram Chittenden, and you'll see his name in other places in Yellowstone, and I'm not going to go into that now. But uh, he was there with some of the early surveying and exploratory parties, and he decided that the north entrance to Yellowstone was looking very bleak and bare. Gardner hadn't been built up at that stage, and uh, he decided it would be a good idea to have an arch. So they put up this arch, and it's a really cool uh, building. I don't know if building's the right word, but it's a very, it's, um, is the right word, but it's a very cool structure. And what we do on our tours, and uh, you can see our tours at yellowstonetours.net, that's yellowstonetours.net, we offer more tours uh, literally than anyone else, more Yellowstone tours than anyone else in the world. What we normally do is we park our cars just inside the entrance at one of these pullouts because there is almost always long lines of cars snaking back to get into Yellowstone. And... Um, you might have a long wait. So we park our car somewhere over here or our bus or whatever it is, walk outside, see the Roosevelt Arch, and come back. Then while I'm at the north entrance, do you see this stretch of road over there? Let's take a look at it on this, this road. This is a one-way road, a very rough, crude road, that runs from Mammoth Hot Springs towards the north entrance. And it's one of the few places where you're allowed to mountain bike. You can walk it, you can mountain bike it. It is downhill, but it is one way. It's a little steep on the way back up, and I never like to ride my bike on the roads actually within Yellowstone because there's very little shoulder and the cars come so close to you. And while I'm talking about biking, look at what we have here. Here's the old Yellowstone Trail. You can take your bike along here. This is just outside the park. If you are going to be on any of these trails, Remember to take bear spray with you. There's an argument to be made that you should have bear spray with you at all times. We rent bear spray. You can see it at YellowstoneBearSprayRentals.com. That's YellowstoneBearSprayRentals.com. Or just go to YSBearSpray.com. YSBearSpray.com. It'll forward you to the site. It's pretty cheap uh, to rent bear spray and um, carry it with you, whether you buy it or uh, rent it from us or from somebody else, always have it with you, especially if you're off the, off the beaten trail. So let's take a look at the, at the map again. We're now at Yellowstone's north entrance. This is where the small town of Gardner is. There's a lot to do in Gardner. The Yellowstone River you can see is right over here. There's river rafting, there's restaurants, there's various other activities. So take your time, take a look around. If you do want a guided hike of the area, we do offer a lot of those at yellowstonedayhikes.com. Just uh, we don't have any hikes in this, in this particular area, but uh, just click on it. It'll take you... Uh, 
to a page which gives you more information about hiking in Yellowstone. And I'm sorry, my internet connection here at the moment is really, really slow. And if you click on these videos, it'll take you to videos which will show you the hike. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on another one of these Yellowstone podcasts. Remember, if you're looking for a place to stay inside Yellowstone, or excuse me, just outside Yellowstone, check out our motel, which you can see at ysmotel.com. All of our rooms have little kitchens in them, and if you don't want to waste money on buying food, it really is a great option. I did mention to you that we rent bear spray. We also run uh, day hikes anywhere from two hours to a day to so many of Yellowstone's popular hikes. And in addition, I did tell you we offer more Yellowstone tours than anyone in the world, which you can see at yellowstonetours.net. That's yellowstonetours.net. Once again, check out all of our videos in our YouTube channel. There's just so much information here. Go to YouTube, search for Yellowstone Tours. That'll bring up our channel. And uh, take a look. As always, feel free, if you have any questions, to ask them in the comments section below. Otherwise, thanks for joining me again. I hope you make it to Yellowstone someday.